Thank you, Jim, and good morning, everybody. I have to say, the wet and the cold suits me very well, too. So we're, we're both at home here, an, I, an Irish gal and a, and a Scottish guy. Um, it's lovely to be here this morning, and thank you so much for um, Alzheimer Europe, uh, Jeanne and, and, and all the team, for organising once again this wonderful conference. I know it's going to be wonderful, because I've been to previous ones, and they always are. So I hope you have a wonderful uh, couple of days. So um, let's, uh, let's kick off, uh, but I want to show you a, um, a little video clip. My name is Brian and I have dementia. My name is Evelyn and I have dementia. My name is Ronan and I have dementia. My name is Helen and I have dementia. I want to live at home for as long as I possibly can and live my life the way I choose. I demand. I demand my basic rights. I demand my basic human rights. To respect. And dignity. To respect. To respect and dignity. We want to see a rights-based approach. For people living with dementia. Their families. And their carers. This is a basic human right. These are our lives. Will you stand beside us? Will you stand beside us? Well, what a powerful question, a powerful statement at the end of that video, and I hope you'll agree a fitting way to, to kick off today's proceedings by shining a light on, on human rights and from the very start of our proceedings to, to make sure that human rights are centre stage in all of the things that come next. Because there's a movement, uh, <laughs> just laughing at this screen, I don't know what this screen's supposed to be. Perhaps I can move to the, to the next one. There we are. So uh, there's a move from personhood to citizenship, of course, and many of you will be familiar with Tom Kidwood's acclaimed book from the late 90s, Dementia Reconsidered. He talks about dementia and personhood, how it implies recognition, respect, trust. But we've moved on from talking about recognition and trust now, uh, which it's about dignity, autonomy, and the right to be heard. Stand beside us. Putting the person first has a new agenda. It's rights-based, and it means that someone with uh, dementia, like any other human being, should be afforded the same rights. When you say it like that, someone with dementia, like any human being, should be afforded the same rights, it sounds so clear and so obvious. So countries, many countries now, have developed action plans and strategies to support investment in infrastructure, administrative systems and services for people with dementia. And given this context, it's growing uh, and the, in the growing movement uh, around human rights and dementia. What this presentation will provide an overview of what a human rights-based approach to dementia strategies looks like in policy and practice. So I'm going to apply a number of fundamental human rights principles to our, to Ireland's first national dementia strategy. And I hope that it, can, it will highlight how strategic national policy and practice can enhance the lives of those living with dementia and play a leading role in realizing those human rights that we've just spoken about. This picture here on the slide is of a charter that was produced by the Irish Dementia Working Group with the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland just this year. I should say that the Irish Dementia Working Group is our equivalent of the European Dementia Working Group comprising people with dementia. We have two members here in the audience somewhere today. Um, and they developed this charter and based on internationally agreed human rights. Uh, and it's intended to promote all of those things that are associated with human rights, respect, protection, fulfillment of all the rights there. So let's talk just for another minute about human rights before we go on to look at how it can be applied to our strategy. Here's a picture of um, some members of our dementia working group at the launch of that strategy. Um, and you might spot, those eagle-eyed of you might spot on the right-hand side of that picture, Mary Robinson, our former president and also former um, uh, UN uh, commissioner, and she was good enough to launch um, this charter for us. And it was an extraordinary day. It was happy. It was celebra celebratory. And everybody was rightly proud. It was extraordinary. But it was also extraordinary because 
when you think that here we have a group of people who are launching a charter saying, I want the same rights as you. Having to do that in itself is extraordinary. So there were a lot of extraordinaries that day. And the rights are not new. They're not extravagant. Basic rights is what we're talking about. They include the right to information, the right to timely diagnosis, the right to services and supports, and a range of other basic rights that people living without dementia take for granted. In 20, this, this was April 2016, so last year, 2015, during a focus group on human rights and dementia as part of developing this charter, members of the working group identified a range of human rights related issues that present for them uh, as people living with dementia. And they included information in an accessible and timely way. Participation was another thing that came up. Participation in society at all levels. Participation in decisions that impact on daily lives. Participation in campaigning on issues of importance. And participation in having a voice, and having a voice for themselves as long as possible and ensuring that those who care for them when they no longer have a voice, have that voice too. There was also discussion about not being stigmatised, not being shamed or discriminated against or excluded because of having the label of an illness. There was discussion in these focus groups on loss of personhood and also on loss of independence, um, specifically including mobility, financially, the ability to work. Also essential medication for people with dementia, not being considered as eligible under long-term illness scheme, a scheme that's specific in the Irish context. There was discussion about stress, the availability of services and concern for carers. So all of these topics came up when this group were discussing what should be in the Charter for Human Rights that they wanted to present to the world. And basically, what they had identified were the core elements of the panel approach, P-A-N-E-L, the panel approach to human rights. And the panel approach is participation, accountability, non-discrimination, empowerment, and legality. You can read it there on the slide. This uh, is a, um, an approach, a human rights-based uh, approach to policy and practice endorsed by the United Nations. And all of the things that came into discussion fitted neatly into this panel approach. So let's, what I'm going to do is apply these panel principles to our own national strategy and see how they work. Bearing in mind I'm doing this retrospectively, our national dementia strategy in Ireland was launched at the end of 2014. This work was done 2015, 2016, and the national dementia strategy uh, wasn't, it wasn't developed with these principles in mind. So wouldn't it be interesting to apply them now and see how they work and see where the gaps are and how we might improve? So just before we get to that step, I want to show you another video clip. Before we produced our National Dementia Strategy in Ireland, members of the working group um, made a video, and I hope you can play this clip for us now. It's not one of the cartoony ones. It should, it should link in from, from the slide. Do you have it there? That's it. Thank you. Well, my wish for the future is that we have A, their early diagnosis, and two, that we have proper education and making the whole of society aware of our illness. When all is said and done, we need as much awareness as possible. Well, everybody I know knows that I have Alzheimer's. It's nothing, something I don't hide. And all my friends, all my neighbours, all know um, that I have Alzheimer's. I don't think it's anything to be afraid of. I would love to see money put into raising awareness of Alzheimer's. I suppose ultimately um, in an ideal country and I would love to see a minister for older people. I think we have a minister for children who are one vulnerable uh, sector of society. Why wouldn't we have a minister for older people? We're living longer um, and we need somebody to dedicate their, their time to looking after the needs and the interests of older people. I was diagnosed in Galway, which is 60-something miles away from where I live. 
And then I had to go home and then there was nothing for me, there was nobody for me to link in with because I really didn't know where to go and um, the consultant had done his job. But for me, I had to get on the internet and find out what actually Alzheimer's was all about. The ideal situation would have been if I had a, de uh, a dementia worker that, I, that would have been there to support me. Somebody that would have been able to just give me some short information. And also, I think that because we don't live in big urban area, in a big urban area, we don't have any supports in place that are in particular for people like myself who are early onset Alzheimer's and are under the age of 65. Rose Cottage, I refer to it as my club. It's a place where um, people with Alzheimer's meet three or four days a week. All the people have Alzheimer's, so we're all in the one boat. So we're all at home with one another. If you get stuck for words, you're sitting beside a person who's also the same as you. And uh, so it's a very great place for me to go every day. Oh, it gives me great confidence in myself because I know that I'm dealing with people. We're all in the same boat. So we are, you don't feel that you're cut out from other people. I think everybody should have, within a reasonable you know, journey time, um, a rose cottage within their locality. The cafe is very important. It's very important to me. To, 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 to me, it was a great help. And that it brought, brought me back into contact with people. It's the instant feeling of warmth. It's part, part of my, 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 my life now. I'm happy the way I am. But we do need a lot more from the government. Well, if the National Dementia Strategy is implemented, and when it isn't implemented, and it is financed and resourced, major changes will happen in this country. Because that then will give us the supports that we require. But it must be financed and, supports, uh, support, uh, and supported. Um, it will help us to realise our human rights. And our human rights are fundamental to us. You know, it's our right as citizens and, um, and, 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 and the state owes us that as citizens. So in that, in that clip there, before our strategy was launched, you heard people talk about the need for awareness, supports and services. And at the end there, you heard, you heard Helen, who's now the, uh, the chair of the European Dementia Working Group, speak about human rights and how that er everyone's human rights should be recognised as citizens of the country. Powerful stuff. This was before our strategy was launched. And as I said earlier, it wasn't the, it developed with the panel approach or human rights approach in mind. So now what, what I'm going to do is look through the main points of panel from P, A, N, E and L uh, through, and, and through the strategy to see how it does, how it does add up. And I just want to mention another thing. There was a man some of you may have recognised in that, in that clip, Dermot Slevin, an, another former member of the European Dementia Working Group. So here's a picture from um, of Helen and the minister and uh, somebody from a, a philanthropic organisation at the launch of the strategy. There's a picture of the strategy itself. So let's go through now uh, the strategy taking a panel approach. Number one, participation. That people with dementia have the right to be provided with accessible information, necessary supports to enable them to exercise their right to participate in decisions and policies with, which, with the, which affect them. So looking at our strategy, well, there's a priority action in it about access to advocacy services um, and that our, our health service executive ensures that uh, and that support services are routinely given. So that's good. In the, under the participation headline, also, people with dementia have the right to live as independently as possible with access to the various uh, recreation, leisure and cultural life in their com community. Now, in our strategy, there's very little in the priority actions that gives rise to new social and community approaches to dementia. 
um, it doesn't prioritise, for example, the development of dementia-friendly community model. It does acknowledge the independence of individuals, and it does talk about the assisted decision-making legislation that's been recently enacted in Ireland about supporting and protecting uh, people with dementia to participate. So there's something there, but not as much as we would hope for under this heading. Also under participation, people with dementia have the right to full participation in care needs assessment, planning, deciding and arranging their care, support and treatment. Um, this is interesting because in participation in the development of this strategy, for example, the voice of the person with dementia was there in development, but it was there represented by us. It was The voice was represented by the Alzheimer's Society of Ireland. Now the strategy has an implementation monitoring group, and on that monitoring group sits a member of our de uh, dementia working group, Helen uh, Rochford Brennan, in fact. So a person with dementia's voice is directly there. So there's a move from representation to participation. And that is that move to the human rights model, isn't it? So in the process, it was representation. Now the voice is, 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 is the person's own direct voice, participation. So that's a positive um, uh, development as well. The second heading under panel is accountability. Accountability meaning that public and private bodies, voluntary organisations and individuals who are responsible for the care and treatment of people with dementia should be held accountable for the respect, protection and fulfilment of their human rights and that adequate steps are in place to ensure that. So there are clear steps in our strategy uh, recommending um, uh, priority actions in relation to leadership, but they're confined to roles rather than specifically described in relation to uploading human rights. So there's a, a, a tick and an X beside that one, a, a, a positive and a smaller negative, could do better. The second heading under, uh, the third heading rather, under panel N, non-discrimination and equality. That people with dementia have the right to be free from discrimination based on any grounds, such as age, disability, gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religious beliefs, uh, and so on. Now, our strategy does recognise people with living, uh, living with dementia, but it fails to acknowledge the wider identities that a person has. So to give you an example, there's a lack of priority for people with dementia who have younger onset, and there's an absence of a commitment to remove age discrimination barriers in our health system. Younger people with dementia, for example, might still be employees, so as well as being identified as somebody with an illness, there's other identifications there. So in our strategy, that wider identification and non-discrimination of somebody uh, based on all the different aspects of their lives isn't fully explored. The fourth heading under the taking the panel approach, E, empowerment. That people with dementia have the right to access appropriate levels of care, uh, providing protection, rehabilitation and support. Now our own strategy has a priority area dedicated to integrated services, supports and care. Um, there may be inequity on, on, on the ground, but the priority area is there. Um, second part under empowerment, that people with dementia have the right to help to attain and maintain maximum independence physical, mental, social, vocational ability, and full inclusion and participation. Now, in our strategy, it states that a social and clinical response is required. That it does state that dementia cuts across many areas of provision. It emphasizes the need for a whole community response to dementia, all good stuff. But interestingly, the actions prioritized under this area in our strategy are really clinical in focus. The focus uh, on wider social inclusion um, doesn't seem to fall under the remit here. And that would change slightly if we were developing this from a, a human rights lens and taking empowerment uh, into play there as well. Also that people with dementia have the right to access opportunities for lifelong learning um, and that people with dementia have the right to health and social care services. Well, training and education is one of the six priority areas in our, in our dementia strategy. Uh, and lastly, the fifth uh, heading under the, the panel approach is legality, that people have the right to the same civil and legal rights as everybody else, and where someone lacks capacity, that anyone acting for them has to have regard for the specific legislation. Um, that recognition is, is um, that is recognised, the significance of the capacity uh, legislation is recognised in our Irish dementia strategy, um, and ensures that people living with dementia are involved in decision making. So that's a positive element. 
So that is a really quick whistle stop uh, tour through the, the, the five uh, pa uh, um, headlines, P-A-N-E-L, under the panel approach, just to show you what an, what an interesting exercise it is to take a, an existing strategy and apply the principles. You can go into much more detail yourselves, of course, looking at your own strategy, either existing or planned. And on this last slide, why have I put up these pictures? Alzheimer Europe, I've included that to represent an, umbel, an umbrella, I suppose, for all of the organizations and all the countries in Europe, because we know that many other European strategies have been underpinned by human rights-based approach. Um, Jim's country, Scotland, for example, uh, has incorporated human uh, rights-based uh, approach and the panel principles into your national dementia strategies. In England, there's a 2015 policy statement on, on dementia referring to the human rights of people with dementia. I've included a, just a picture there of the conventional rights of persons with disabili uh, disabilities because we know that from listening to people with dementia that there is more to be done about integrating uh, the convention into national dementia strategies as well. So how would panel, the panel approach work with your strategy? How would the panel approach work with your planned strategy? That's the question I want to leave you with today that all of us can, can go from here, take the human rights approach, and see how we can put it center stage, either by adapting and revisiting what we have, seeing where the gaps are, or by taking it now and going forward. So putting it center stage from here on in now, so that we can ensure that next year when we can come back, and the year after and the year after, we're all talking about our strategies, current and planned, and how a human rights approach applies to them all. That same human right that every citizen should have and that all of the things we do throughout every aspect of our life should be informed by. Thank you.